What's going on gamers? Today we're going to be going over how you can add behavior packs to your bedrock world. Before we get into this tutorial, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you can get notified of all of our latest tutorials we upload, just like this one. Modifying the base game of Minecraft is one of the most fun parts of the game. One of the most common ways to modify Minecraft is through the use of mods or plugins as these can make the server really unique and fun for all of the players. Unfortunately, with Bedrock, you're limited on the modifications that can be made to the game. With that being said, one of the best ways to modify the Bedrock version of the game is with Behavior Packs. Behavior Packs are add-ons, like mods, that can alter the behaviors that make up an entity. Bedrock Behavior Packs cannot be as easily activated as some of the Java-based mods to servers. In this video, we're going to be going over downloading your current world, activating the Behavior Pack locally, and uploading the world back to the server. In order to download your server's world file, you're going to need to set up an FTP client such as FileZilla to access your server's files. We're going to start off by jumping into Google, and we're going to Google FileZilla download. From here, we're going to go ahead and click on go to download or click on their download page. From the download page, we're going to make sure to download the client and not the server version. You're going to need to download the leftmost download option and then click close on any pop-ups. Then you can click on the file that has been downloaded. Make sure to allow it and then read the licensing if you want to read it and then click next. And once it's finished allocating its memory files, then you can go ahead and select the options that you would like to apply. Then you can click next and then you can select the options you'd like to apply and then click next. And then you can select a location for you to install it to and then click next. And then click next. And then make sure to decline anything that isn't FileZilla itself. So decline this and then decline this because it's not FileZilla and then let FileZilla install. Then you can click next to launch it up. Once you're in FileZilla, all you're going to need to do is open up a browser like Google Chrome or something and then hop into your server panel. Once you're in your server panel, make sure to log in. And then from there, open up the server that you want to use. Then jump into FTP file access on the left and copy your host so that you can paste it into FileZilla. You're also going to need to copy the username. Go ahead and paste in the host and then copy the username and then input the password that you would use to log in and the port of course. And once you put in your password, then you can go ahead and click on quick connect. From here, you're going to have access to all of the files that you're going to use. Now your worlds are going to be located in the worlds folder right here. As you can see, I have two worlds shaft and then I have the test world. Then once you're here and you're logged in, you can just find the world that is named the world that you're using in your server panel. If you're not too sure, you can just click on the name of your server and then scroll down the page and find the world field. If you want to find this world in FileZilla, all you're going to need to do is hop into FileZilla, then scroll down to the worlds folder, and then in the worlds folder, make sure that you find the folder that has the same name as the world that you saw in the world field on your server panel. So right here, we have one that says test. And then in FileZilla, we're going to find that test folder and then click and drag it to our desktop. And once it downloads, you're going to have your world downloaded to your computer. Now that we've downloaded our world, we're going to need to import it to our local Bedrock version of Minecraft so that we can manage it with behavior packs. Go ahead and hit the Windows key and then type percent app data and then percent and then hit enter. Once you hit enter, you're going to want to find the local folder by going back one page and then click into the local folder. From there, we're going to be going to the packages folder by scrolling down and locating it. 
Then we're going to need to look for the Microsoft.Minecraft UWP underscore 8 WEK and then a bunch of different stuff. Click into that folder and then find the local state. Then find games. Then enter this folder and then jump into your Minecraft Worlds folder. From here, drag the world folder you downloaded from your server to this folder that you just opened up. Then you can start up your Windows 10 edition of Minecraft or your Bedrock version and you should now see the world listed as one of your single player saves in your game. It might have an odd save date, but once you load in, everything should load in correctly. Now we're going to need to find behavior packs online. Here I'm just on Google and I'm just searching best Minecraft behavior packs or best bedrock behavior packs. And here I'm going to make sure that I only hop onto secure sites. Like Minecraft has this article from a couple years back, but a lot of these will be updated to today. Now, some of them won't be updated, and that's really worth mentioning because you might spend a lot of time looking for something that hasn't been updated since 2017, and it's obviously not going to work since Bedrock Edition servers are constantly updated, so it probably won't be compatible with your server is it if it hasn't been updated in the last three or so months. Sites like CurseForge keep this in mind. A lot of the packs that you see on the CurseForge behavior pack page are going to have completely updated behavior packs. Once you do find a behavior pack you like, what you're going to want to do is click on it to get to the download page. Once you get to the download page, you can go ahead and click into the files tab and you're going to be looking for files that have a dash bedrock extension at the end of them and make sure that you click on download. When this is done downloading, you're going to want to open up the folder where we put your downloaded server world into earlier. If you still have that folder open, go ahead and open that folder up. If not, you can go ahead and look back in the video to find out how to open it. Once you have that folder open, you can go ahead and find the data packs folder and then you can just click the file that you downloaded into the data packs folder, which of course is in the world folder. All you need to do from here is double click on the .mc file and it'll open up Minecraft and start importing or installing the behavior pack all by itself. Once the behavior pack is loaded, you can then go ahead and check in your settings and you see that it's not active. All you need to do is click on the behavior pack and then click activate. Then once it's finished activating, you can go ahead and jump into your world by clicking on play and then loading into your world. If the behavior pack is working as intended, then you're ready to upload the world back to the server. To start uploading your world to your server, you're gonna to want to head to your main menu of your Bedrock world and click on play. Then on the little pen tool beside the world, you're gonna click on that. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and you're gonna see an option that says export world. After picking a place to save it, and we recommend the desktop, all you need to do is hit export. Once this is complete, you're going to have a .mc world file of your world. We're going to need to convert this to a zip file before uploading it to the server. Converting it to a zip is pretty easy. All you're going to need to do is right click on your file and rename. But before you rename, you're going to need to check and view and make sure that you have this checkbox enabled. Then you can right click the file and change the extension to .mc world to .zip and then hit enter. It's gonna ask you if you wanna change it, go ahead and click yes, and it'll change it to a zip file, which then you can take to FileZilla and upload to your server. Now for uploading your world to your server with the behavior packs already in it, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to want to head to your main panel page. From here, you're gonna to need to go ahead and stop your server as of course when making any changes to your server you're going to need to stop it beforehand. Now once your server stopped you can go ahead and hit the Windows key and then open up FileZilla. Once FileZilla pops up go ahead and hit enter and you can re-enter your information but if you're only using FileZilla for connecting to your server 
what you can do is click on the server tab at the top and then click on reconnect or hit control R. As you can see, it's bought up all of my server's files. So now what we can do is go ahead and scroll down to worlds. From here, you can see that we have Apex and Shaft, which are two different worlds. What we're going to do now is we're going to right click and then create a directory. From here, you can go ahead and name it something that you would like your world to be named. For this purpose, we're just going to upload T, capital T, E, S, and then T, and then click on OK. Now from here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to bring up the folder where we have our zipped file. Then we're going to click and drag it into the folder that we just made. The reason that we're doing this is because if you go into the folder, you're going to see that it has the files in there. So when we extract it in the server panel page, it's going to extract the files and not the folder name test. So now that we've done that, what we can do is go ahead and hop on our server panel page and then go into FTP file access. But before we go into FTP file access, what we're going to do is scroll down to the world file or the world input and then look in the input. As long as it's named the same thing as your folder, you're good to go. Now that we've made sure that we have the correct world, we can go ahead and jump into FTP file access. Then we can go ahead and log in. From here, scroll down until you find the world's folder. And then in the world's folder, go ahead and jump in. Then you're going to want to check the box of this zipped file and then click on unzip. Leave everything as is and then click on submit. What we're doing here is we're waiting for the server to tell us that it's done extracting all of the files. So once it gives us the done and then returned OK command, what we can do is click on back and then go ahead and click on worlds and then open up the folder and you're going to see all of your world files uploaded correctly. Then we can go ahead and click on the name of our server at the top. Scroll down, make sure that it's still the same world, and then we can go ahead and start or restart your server to get it up and running again. And then you have successfully uploaded your world to your server. If you notice that your behavior pack isn't working properly, there could be a few issues. Firstly, if it was working as intended in single player, but not on the server, you may not have exported the correct world or one of the steps may have been missed. We recommend you go over the guide once more to ensure everything is followed correctly. In the beginning of the video, we did go over how to properly install and activate behavior packs. So double check and make sure that you followed those instructions correctly. But if you did do everything correctly, we recommend checking the source where you got the behavior pack to make sure that it is compatible with the current version of Bedrock to see if there are any special instructions provided. If you join a server after following all the steps and you aren't in the correct world, you're going to want to check a few different things. Double check that you've uploaded the world properly as we went over in this video guide and you're also going to want to make sure that you've set the proper world name in the world field. The name that you need to have the server load is the name of the newly created folder that we unzip the world into. And it has to be uppercase and lowercase sensitive because our world servers do load the capital letters and lowercase letters. If you have further issues into getting the proper world loaded, you can contact us 24 seven at any time via our support channels on your server panel in the bottom right, or you can send a ticket to billing in your billing page. Well, folks, that's all I've got for you today. As always, I hope you have lots of fun. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more great content like this, then subscribe or click these videos. Until next time, gamers.